So we will start from uh, slide number 41, uh, where Chandu is there to coordinate. And uh, you would have, <clears throat> yeah, you can enlarge it, brother. Yeah. So we have been uh, focusing upon the subject genealogies, uh, often neglected by the Christians. They will say, oh, this is one of the boring sections of the Bible. So we need to remember 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Every word in the scriptures is inspired by God. So if, when it says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, that every scripture is inspired by the Lord, then it includes the genealogies, and we have been learning some important lessons from the genealogies in the Bible. If not for those genealogies, we would not have accessed such a rich information. And uh, at the very beginning, let me uh, re-emphasize uh, re the truth that the most important ministry God has given to all of us Christians is the ministry of worshiping him. Yes, there are other important ministries like preaching of the gospel, establishing churches, winning of souls, prophesying, healing, so on and so forth. But of all the ministries, the worship ministry stands tall. Why? Reason is all other ministries are confined to this side of eternity, whereas worship is one ministry which will begin on this side of eternity and continue on to the other side of eternity also. Um, you can give me an answer in the public chat. Uh, would there be any preaching of the gospel once we go to heaven? Would there be any healing ministry there in heaven? Um, would there be any winning of souls in heaven? No. So thank you, Sister Gathery. Uh, right on dot. So, <clears throat> but the worship ministry would continue. And when it comes to worship ministry, dear friends, more than worshiping God for the blessings which he pours into our lives, we need to worship him for what he is, for his unique qualities, for his unique virtues. Just I would like to bring before you one uh, scriptural account, Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Sister Catherine will read it out. I'll come to the main uh, topic for our meditation today. But uh, before that, uh, just to re-emphasize the fact that we need to worship the Lord for his unique qualities, I would request uh, Sister Catherine to read out to us from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 3, and Brother Chandu also will display it for us. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Thank you, sister. So <clears throat> I would ask you a question at this point of time. What is the food uh, angel seat? <laughs> Give me an answer. Very elementary question. Uh, those of us who have done Bible study of the book of Exodus would be able to give an answer immediately. What is the food which angel seat? You can unmute and give an answer also. The food of the angels, manna, yes, absolutely, right? So you can just see that the angels are worshipping the Lord, not even for his provisions, but for who he is. They have taken one virtue of the Almighty God, and that is his holiness. They are not saying, Lord, you have given us a belly full of manna today. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, no. They may have had their, their quota of manna, but for what are they worshipping the Lord? They are worshipping him for who he is, for one of his unique virtues. And one of his unique virtues is holiness. Holy, holy, holy. So, dear friends, um, even as we study the genealogies, what comes out is the wisdom of our Heavenly Father. The wisdom of our Heavenly Father. To give us a detailed account. See, unless... We know ABC of a subject. We will not be able to find out the XYZ of that subject. Again, I'm using a figurative language. Unless we know the ABC of a subject, we will not be able to find out the XYZ of a subject. Again, I'll ask you a question. What is constructed first? The 
foundation or the roof? <laughs> Give me an answer. What is foundation? Very good. So, dear friends, the genealogies are the foundation. And then we come to other matters. So, dear, we'll go to the slideshow. Uh, in the subject of genealogies, we have traced the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is of the order of Melchizedek, whose high priestly ministry is of the order of Melchizedek, through Matthew's genealogy and Luke's genealogy. Let's go to the next slide, brother. Uh, we have also seen that uh, like the priests of the Kohathite clan, next slide, brother, like the priests of the Kohathite clan carry the Ark of the Covenant, which symbolizes the covenantal relationship between God and Israel. Our high priest, our Lord Jesus Christ, high priest of the order of Melchizedek, he is carrying the cross, which is symbolizing the covenantal relationship between God and us Christians. And uh, last week, I had shared with you how God in his wisdom sent the son at the right time when crucifixion as a death penalty had emerged or come to the fore. Um, there were other world empires before the Roman Empire, like the Egyptian Empire, Assyrian Empire, Babylonian Empire, Medo-Persian Empire, and the Greek Empire. In, during their uh, reigns, uh, none of these empires had brought the death penalty as crucifixion. Now, I had not decreed that a criminal in that society or a rebel against the empire of that society would be entitled to this kind of a death penalty. <clears throat> it was only during the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire also decreed that a person who is going to be crucified has to bear his own cross to add to his uh, you know, ordeal, to add to his excruciating experience. Uh, uh, the person who was to be crucified would be whipped, his back would be virtually be plowed, and then he would be required to carry his own cross. You can just imagine the excruciating agony of a person who is uh, bearing the cross with a plowed back, as it were, with a whipped back. And our Lord Jesus Christ was whipped more than 39 times. It was as per the Roman law and not as per the Jewish law. And he carried the cross. And look at how... <clears throat> Everything was happening as per God's will, as per God's will. And uh, at no point of time in human history, before the Roman Empire did, crucifixion emerge as the death penalty. Only during the Roman Empire, it emerged as the death penalty, whereby <clears throat> this high priestly ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ is fulfilled. Then uh, last week, we also uh, focused, dear friends, on the, uh, some beat on his the payback, let's go to the next slide. Ah, next slide, brother. God's timing and sovereignty. Yeah, payback. Uh, our God is a God who is jealous of his name. Where we fail, he'll make us victors. Where we are defeated, he'll make us triumphant. Um, the first Adam, also the son of God, had fallen into sin, had disobeyed, on account of a tree. And God in his sovereign wisdom ensured that salvation came into mankind, again on account of it another tree. And that is the cross. Um, we have seen in, Galatia, in Genesis chapter 3 verse 6 and Galatians chapter 3 verse 30, uh, dear friends, how the tree was instrumental for bringing sin into this world and how it another tree in human history was instrumental in bringing salvation into this world. On account of one tree, one son of God is disobeying. And on account of it another tree, it another son of God, the final Adam, our Lord Jesus Christ is showing obedience in most unfavorable of circumstances. When the first son of God, the first Adam fell into sin, he fell into sin on account of a tree in most favorable circumstances. Whereas the final Adam, the son of God is displaying obedience in most unfavorable of circumstances. Now, since we are on the subject of priesthood, dear friends, since we are on the subject of priesthood, before I come to yet another um, truth from the Jewish uh, um, commentaries, Jewish Bible commentaries, that also I'm going to show to you today, if time permits. Before I come to that, let us complete these two Ps also. Brother Chandu will uh, point a cursor at the second P. And that is posture signifying priesthood. Okay, posture 
signifying priesthood. <clears throat> now, dear friends, uh, what is the fundamental role of a priest? If we ask ourselves this question, what is the fundamental role of a priest? He is a mediator between God and men. Again, I repeat, if we ask ourselves this question, what is the fundamental role of a priest? He is a mediator between God and men. He, as a representative of God, represents God before men, insisting on their holiness. And as a representative of mankind, he intercedes with God. He intercedes, pleads with God to, uh, so that God extends his forgiveness towards mankind. So that is the uh, mediatory role played by a priest. And let us look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, which is speaking about the mediatory role of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sister um, Catherine will read it out for us. Sister Catherine will read it out for us. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Look at that. So, <clears throat> he is the mediator. He is playing that role of a middleman, an arbitrator, so to speak. And uh, now, just when we focus upon the posture of a person who is getting crucified, there is a message for us. Who is a person who is getting crucified? What is his physical posture when he is getting crucified? God lives beyond the skies and human beings live on planet Earth, that is the soil, okay? Now, <clears throat> the person who is getting crucified, his head neither touches the sky nor his feet touch the ground. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. He is hanging virtually in between the sky and planet Earth. Are you understanding? A person who is getting crucified is virtually hanging between the sky and the ground. Or beyond the sky resides the Almighty God and on the ground beside men. Even the posture of crucifixion is symbolizing the mediatory role played by our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> Dear friends, look at that. During, again I repeat, the Egyptian Empire, the Assyrian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, or the Medo Persian Empire, or the Greek Empire, crucifixion did not come as a death penalty. It came during the Roman Empire only. And when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Uh, Brother Chandu is also. Uh, displaying to us a, a slide which shows the world powers in chronological order. First is Egypt, followed by Assyrians, then Babylonians, then Medo Persians, then the Greece and the Romans. For how many years they ruled also uh, is there, uh, from which year to which year. Uh, we, will, <laughs> we will look into that slide when we come to yet another subject also. Okay, so <clears throat> what I'm uh, uh, focusing upon or what I'm emphasizing is the posture of our Lord Jesus Christ as he is hanging on the cross, that also is symbolizing the mediatory role. And uh, when it comes to payback, the tree which uh, led man to sin, where was that tree? Uh, I'll ask you a question. What is the known world to Adam and Eve? What is the known world to Adam and Eve before they fell into sin. Did they know that there was any other world beyond Garden of Eden? Give me an S or no. <laughs> Did they know that there was any other? No, says Brother Chandra, right? And where was this tree which led them on to sin? Uh, Genesis chapter 2 verse 9. Uh, Sister Catherine also will read it out for us. Genesis. Chapter 2, verse 9. Yeah. And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. 
the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was in the middle of the garden the tree which led to adam and eve committing the first sin and bringing sin into mankind was in the middle of the garden along with tree of life listen to me very carefully the tree of knowledge was in the middle of the garden and now we are talking about payback right so the tree which brought salvation now for adam and eve the known world was garden of eden it was in the middle of their world and in the middle of then known world america was not yet uh, discovered australia was not yet discovered people thought that all of life existed between uh, the landlocked continents of africa asia and europe and at that point of time what what was in the middle of the world let us look into ezekiel chapter 5 verse 5 sister catherine will read it out for us uh ezekiel chapter 5 verse 5 where our lord jesus christ was crucified ezekiel 5 5 ezekiel 5 verse 5 yes that says the lord god this is jerusalem i have set her in the midst of the nations and the countries all around her look at that the tree which is bringing salvation also is in the middle of the world hallelujah praise the lord are you understanding dear friends how many <laughs> aspects are covered by our lord jesus christ dying on the cross uh, in jerusalem the tree which was instrumental for bringing sin into mankind was in the midst of then known world to adam and eve and the tree which was used by the almighty god in his sovereign wisdom is also in the middle again <laughs> where the high priest is performing the mediatory role he himself is in the middle between god and men where else could that tree be except in the middle of men hallelujah praise the lord and look at god's sovereign wisdom in placing the jesus cross in the middle between the crosses of two criminals are you understanding dear friends how god's sovereign wisdom and power was being used at that point of time everything was taking place as per god's will it was foreordained our sovereign god had everything in his control is this the only the first time you see our heavenly father uh, showing a sovereignty regarding uh, events related to our lord jesus christ life where was uh, our lord jesus christ supposed to be born as per micah 52 even before sister catherine reads it out i'm very sure the knowledgeable participants will tell me uh, micah 52 is giving the prophecy of the place of birth of our lord jesus christ give me what not jerusalem brother bethlehem yes <laughs> micah 52 where where jesus would be born sister catherine i am just bringing out the sovereignty of god micah 52 but you bethlehem ephrata do you the thousands of juda yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in israel whose goings forth are from of old from everlasting yeah there will be born the king of kings in bethlehem now jesus was a descendant of david okay i am giving you my own example i am actually hailing from chengalpet in chennai tamil nadu i am a tamilian suresh manoharan any word any name ending with n <laughs> you can make a guess that he is a tamilian in uh, andhra pradesh it will be srinivas in uh, tamil nadu it will be srinivasan okay uh, in andhra pradesh it will be krishna in uh, tamil nadu it will be krishnan so suresh manoharan actually hails from chengalpet chennai tamil nadu 
But now I am in Hyderabad because my parents migrated to Hyderabad for different reasons. Now, look at this. Let us assume this is Israel, okay? <clears throat> Actually, both Joseph and Mary, the descendants of David, ought to have been in Bethlehem. But from the time of David till the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, thousand years have lapsed. How many years have lapsed? Thousand years have lapsed and different circumstances would have led them to migrate to Nazareth up north. Are you all with me? Nazareth is up north. Okay? Now, <laughs> a question to all the mothers uh, in this group. Uh, would any one of you in the advanced stage of pregnancy travel through a place of hills and valleys, hills and valleys, and come to <laughs> Bethlehem like Mary did? No way, says Sister Catherine. Very good. What about other mothers also? I am very sure. In advanced stage of pregnancy, would any one of you <clears throat> travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem? That also a land full of hills and valleys. Sister Jayamala also <laughs> is telling no. But God's sovereignty was in action. And Caesar Augustus passed a decree that all the people should go back to their native villages for registration. Now he had a selfish agenda. The agenda was once their names are registered, he can always track whether they are paying the taxes or not. He had a selfish agenda, but who moved his heart at that point of time? Heavenly Father moved his heart at that point of time in order Micah's prophecy is fulfilled. I'm bringing sovereignty of God into action. I'm bringing sovereignty of God into the picture. So similarly, when Jesus died, we can see God's sovereignty. We can see God's sovereignty. And uh, dear friends, uh, uh, let us go to the slideshow. Um, you can just uh, read from Acts chapter 4, verses 27 and 28. Everything happening as per God's will at the time of our Lord's death. Uh, Brother Chandu also will display it and Sister Catherine will read it out. <clears throat> Acts chapter 4 verses 27 to 28. How it clearly spells out that everything was happening in a foreordained manner. For Acts truly, chapter 4 verses 27 to 28. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Look at that. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hitting the nail on the head. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. So, dear friends, our God is seated on the throne. He is Adonai God. Everything is in his control. Yet another virtue for which we need to worship God. Yet another virtue for which we should utter a loud hallelujah. Is, he is Adonai. Everything is in his control. So, dear friends, whenever some difficulties come your way, when you know God is seated on the throne, should you be perturbed? <laughs> I'm asking you a question. <laughs> Sister Catherine is saying hallelujah and also uh, typing no in caps <clears throat> to uh, uh, re-emphasize to substantiate the fact we should not be perturbed at all because he is in control. Unless the troubles have come on account of your own sin. If troubles have come on account of your own sin, yes, you should be perturbed. Yes, you should repent like David did in Psalm 51. But if troubles have come your way for which you are not responsible, then you need not be perturbed. You need not be disturbed. Because God is seated on the throne. He is having everything in his control. Why are we doing Bible study? Bible study is done and is, and is done following three steps. What are the three steps? First is observation. Observation is what scripture says. Second is interpretation. interpretation. What scripture is teaching us. And third and most important, last but not the least, is application. 
what the scripture has taught us, we need to apply in our day-to-day -day Christian living. That is the purpose of Bible study. Again, I repeat. First, observation. What the scripture says. Second, interpretation. Understanding what the scripture is telling you. And third, application. Apply it in your day-to-day -day life. And when you realize that our God is Adonai God, seated on the throne, should you be perturbed? When difficulties come your way for which you are not responsible? No. Hand it over into his hands. And uh, just, dear friends, uh, I'm going slightly deep on the matter of sovereignty. Uh, when you look into Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, uh, which Sister Catherine read, read out to us, what does it say? It says, in the year King Uzziah died, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw God seated on the throne. Now, Uzziah was the Judean king and mostly he was a good king. And during his reign, listen to me very carefully, during the reign of King Uzziah, the Judeans prospered economically and there was security for them also. None of the enemies around the Judean kingdom had the courage to invade Judah, Judah, Judah when uh, King Uzziah was on the throne. Now my question to the group, whenever good leaders depart or when they die, will there be some anxiety and worry in the hearts of the people? <laughs> whenever good leaders depart, yes, says Brother Stephen. It was very much there in the hearts of the Judeans. It was very much their concern and anxiety and worry was very much there in the heart of Prophet Isaiah also. And look at every word in the scripture. Every word in the scripture has been written with a purpose. It doesn't say in the scripture, I saw God seated on the throne. It says, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw God seated on the throne. Why? What was God conveying? The good leaders will come and go. But a person, the king of kings, who is concerned about your welfare, who is concerned about your future, is permanently seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you understanding? Are you all understanding? Dear friends, whenever we look into the scriptures, understanding the context, bringing the context also into the picture, the scripture portion carries more punch. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw God seated on the throne. Are you understanding? So, <clears throat> whenever we bring context into the picture, the scripture portion carries more punch. So, uh, our God is sovereign, not only at the time of our Lord Jesus Christ's death on the cross, which, uh, you know, depicted his high priestly ministry. <laughs> Even at the time of his birth, we see God's sovereignty in action. And now, even at the time of his birth, we see high priestly work of God in action. High priestly work of God in action. Now, let's go back to the slideshow. I'm going step by step. Dear friends. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Go back, brother. Yeah. Let us look at. Uh, uh, I'll ask a question and then we'll go ahead. But, brother, go back. High priestly minister. Yeah. Yeah. Stop there. Uh, let us assume that there is a dispute between a husband and a wife. Okay. <laughs> It should not happen in a Christian home, but let us assume for a moment. Now, whom would they choose to be an arbitrator, to be a peacemaker? What is the most important qualification required of a peacemaker? I'm involving the group. We are here to learn. If we give wrong answers also, nothing to worry. Impartiality. Past <laughs> impartiality, impartiality. He should, if he's impartial only, he'll be accepted by both the parties. If one of the parties think, if one of the party feels that he is not impartial, then he, he cannot be a peacemaker. Now, at the time of our Lord Jesus Christ's birth, also, 
dear friends the word used by angel gabriel uh, sister catherine will read out to us the uh, the appearance of angel gabriel to mary is there in uh, luke's gospel chapter 1 verses 26 to 38 but i will make a read only verse 35 and uh, also matthew's gospel chapter 8 verse 20 two important titles have been ascribed to our lord jesus christ in his earthly ministry okay two important titles which bring out the fact that he is an impartial arbitrator okay first luke's gospel chapter 1 verse 35 and the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, <laughs> Sister Catherine will also read out to us from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 20. Now, what is yet another title which is ascribed to our Lord Jesus Christ? And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have their nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Son of Man! <laughs> he is Son of God because he is born by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Son of Man because he is born through the seed of Virgin Mary. I repeat, he is Son of God because he is born by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is son of man because he is born by the seed of Virgin Mary. Now listen to me very carefully. The perfect arbitrator, the perfect high priest, the perfect mediator, as son of God, he comes and stands before men. As son of God, as a representative of God, he says all of you need to lead a holy life pleasing the holy God. Then as a son of man, he stands before God. He pleads on behalf of entire mankind for God's forgiveness to be extended to mankind. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amazing, is it not? <laughs> Look at his birth. Son of God, son of man. We are, we are focusing on the high priestly ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, even at the time of his birth, look at <clears throat> The title son of God. And then he is also given the title of son of man. Who could be a more perfect mediator <laughs> than our Lord Jesus Christ? As a son of God, he stands before us as God's representative. He <clears throat> is pleading with us to lead a holy life, to lead a life which is pleasing unto the almighty, holy God. And as a son of man is standing before God, interceding for God's forgiveness to be extended to us. A perfect high priest, even by birth. Now, since we are on that subject, let's go back to the slideshow. We are here to unravel the mystery. So, uh, every participant at the end of every Bible study should be thanking the Lord. Lord, I have learned something new. <laughs> okay, So that is why uh, so much of research is going into all these Bible studies. And let us look at the placement in the Gospels. The placement in the Gospels. Okay, The genealogy placements in the Gospels and Jesus' birth being mentioned in the Gospels. Now, <coughs> in Matthew's Gospel and in Luke's Gospel, we see the birth of Jesus recorded. But in Matthew's gospel, we see Jesus' birth from Joseph's perspective. Angel is appearing to Joseph, not to Mary. And it is insisting or rather instructing Joseph to accept Mary as his wife because he has heard the news that, you know, before their marriage, she has become pregnant. And then again, angel is appearing to Joseph and asking uh, uh, him to go uh, run away to Egypt. Because uh, King Herod is uh, planning to kill all the children who are of two years and below in the city of Bethlehem. Okay, So the Christmas account as it were, uh, to a, we are seeing from Joseph's perspective in Matthew's gospel. Now when it comes to Luke's gospel, now look at God's wisdom. I said we need to worship God for who he is. And let us worship him for his sovereign wisdom. 
he in his wisdom ensured that Christmas account is coming through Joseph's perspective in Matthew's gospel. When you come to Luke's gospel, you're seeing the Christmas account from Mary's perspective. Angel Gabriel is appearing to Mary and first is the word of appreciation, the word of commendation. Oh, blessed, you're going to be the mother of son of God. Okay? And Mary expresses her apprehensions. She says, how can I uh, become a mother when I have not known any man? Okay? So, <clears throat> Dear friends, now look at God's wisdom in placing the Christmas account in Matthew's gospel and placing the Christmas account in Luke's gospel in different ways, in different ways. He could have done it the other way around also. In Matthew's gospel, he could have presented the Christmas story from Mary's perspective, in Luke's gospel, he could have presented the Christmas account from Joseph's perspective. Why this way? What could have been the reason? What could have been the reason? Listen to me very carefully. Dear friends, if at all, uh, let me share with you one more thing. Was there any virgin birth before our Lord Jesus Christ's birth? Yes or no? No. Any virgin birth after our Lord Jesus Christ's birth? Again, no. So, is the unique miracle, our Lord Jesus Christ's birth, is the unique, unique of unique miracles? Yes or no? <laughs> yes or no? Unique of unique miracles. Yes, says Sister Catherine. Dear friends, <clears throat> Easy to believe this unique miracle? Again, give me an yes or no. Is it easy to believe? Will people believe it just like that? No. <laughs> Sister Catherine is virtually a spokesperson for the entire group. Huh? No, says Sister Catherine. Not easy to believe. Now, God in his sovereign wisdom ensured that this Christmas account of virgin birth is there in Luke's gospel, written by Dr. Luke. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. If at all there is one person on planet Earth who would not believe in virgin birth, it would be a doctor. And we have the doctor telling us about the virgin birth to the planet Earth. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. If this doesn't produce a hallelujah for God's wisdom, then nothing else will. Are you understanding? God has made the doctor write about the virgin birth, especially that, that portion where Mary expresses her apprehensions. Oh, I am a virgin. I have not known any man. How can I conceive? Through the pen of Dr. Luke, God is making the world know about this unique of unique miracles. Are you understanding? High priestly ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. Son of God and son of man. Son of God and son of man. Are you all with me? So dear friends, uh, let's go back to the slideshow. Let's go back to the slideshow. So you can see payback. You can see posture. You can see placement in the Gospels. Uh, the Christmas story of our Lord's high priestly ministry. Uh, right from his birth, there has been symbolism of his high priestly ministry all along. Okay. And then uh, we'll come to yet another important uh, part of uh, uh, the Jewish Bible commentaries, which uh, usually Christians are not aware of. Uh, at least I will share the introduction since we have time. Let's go to the next slide, brother. Yeah. <clears throat> Down below. Uh, is it visible? The 11th uh, subheading? The 11th subheading. Uh, brother Chandu, can you reduce it? Because Yes, Pastor. It's visible, Pastor. 
Uh, what does it say? <laughs> hedge. 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 Uh, what does hedge stand for? Uh, let's see the picture. What does the hedge stand for? Protection. Yes, absolutely. Now, dear friends, we'll go step by step. Okay. I said that we need to worship God for what he is, okay? And of different unique attributes in our Heavenly Father, one unique attribute is he's faithful, he's faithful, okay? Uh, Deuteronomy 7, 9, since the scripture portion is already there, I'm not asking Sister Catherine to read it out. I'll read it out for you. Know therefore that Lord your God is God. He is faithful, God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations those who love him and keep his commandments, okay? Wherever the word faithful comes, the covenant is also there. In Telugu also, their punch is there in the Bible. Um, <clears throat> can, is anybody having Telugu Bible? Namadagina Devudu and Nibandana go hand in hand, okay? Uh, I'll come to the uh, nitty gritty of this subject step by step, but uh, anybody can read from Telugu Bible if anybody has. Um, Nibandana and uh, Namakatvamu, Devuni Namakatvamu, side by side well uh, uh, Can you read from same Deuteronomy chapter 7? 7 and 9 in Telugu also. Sister Jayamala, if, if you can read it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Kabati ni Devudana Yehova, Tane Devudana Yu, Tanu Preminchi, Tana Ajana Nansarin Chinarichkunu Variki. Tana Nibandana Stirapachu Wadanu, Vei Taramulavarku Krupa Chupu Wadanu, Namma Dagina Devudananyu, Tanudveshin Chuvarlo Pratiwaliki Bhai. Chal. So Namma Dagina Devudu, Nibandana are going hand in hand. Uh, I'll request Sister Jaimala to read from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, also in Telugu. Hebrews 10, 23, also in Telugu. Namma Dagina Devudu, Nibandana go hand in hand. The punch in English translation is not there that much as it is there in Telugu translation. Okay. Telugu is coming straight from the original. Okay. 10 23, Pastor. Mm. 10 23. Hebrews 10 23. Look at that. Wherever there is a promise, wherever there is a covenant, you see God's faithfulness. Okay? Now, let's go to the slideshow. Yeah, let's go to the next slide, brother. Uh, let us understand the difference between a covenant and a contract. Contract is always between two parties of equal stature. Whereas covenant is between a higher party and a lower party, okay? Comparatively speaking, physically strong husband is entering into a covenantal relationship with a weak vessel, that is his wife, that he will take care of her, he will protect her, he will provide for her, till death do a spark, till death do a spark, I will protect you, I will provide for you. So it is a Covenant. Marriage is a covenant. Can we read Malachi 2.14? The word covenant comes in the context of marriage. Malachi 2.14. Contract. We should know the difference between a contract and a covenant. Contract is always between two parties of equal stature, whereas covenant is between a higher party and a lower party. Pastor, should I read? Or in yeah, yeah, please read. Yeah. You can, now we can go back to English. We can go back. Yet, to yet you say, for what reason? Because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously. Yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant. Wife by covenant. Covenant. Okay, marriage is a covenant. Similarly, father writes a will. Person of higher stature is, you know, when he's preparing the will, he's preparing a covenant. This is how my property shall be shared amongst my children. Okay. Uh, then, one more difference between contract and a covenant is, contract stands cancelled 
if one of the parties breaks the terms of the contract. In a covenant, the higher party continues to remain faithful, even if the lower party is not abiding by the terms. One book in the Bible which will bring tears to your eye is the book of Hosea. The Lord says to Hosea, go and marry Gomer, who is not a faithful wife at all to him. Even though Gomer is unfaithful, she is running after other men, Hosea continues to remain faithful. And God is bringing out the comparison between Hosea's emotional state and his own emotional state. He says how Hosea's heart is broken by the unfaithfulness of his wife. Similarly, my heart is broken by the unfaithfulness of the Israelites. They have got everything from me. I'm the provider. I'm the protector. But they are running after idols. They are rejecting me. Just as Gomer has rejected her husband, Hosea, who is providing for her, who is protecting her, who is taking care of her. And in that very book, dear friends, let's go to the next slide. We, we see how God is describing this relationship with Adam also. Uh, Hosea chapter 6 verse 7. Hosea chapter 6 verse 7. But like men, they transgress the covenant. Adam, but like Adam, they transgress the covenant. There they dealt treacherously with me. Look at that. Just like Adam broke the covenant with me. The Israelites are also doing the same. They have got <laughs> the land flowing with milk and honey from me. Adam got Garden of Eden from me. He did not create Garden of Eden. Nor have these Israelites created this land flowing with milk and honey themselves. I am the provider. Adam did not obey me. Israelites are also not obeying me. Now my question to the group. Did God snap relationship with Adam because he disobeyed? Totally did he snap relationship? No. Did he snap relationship with uh, Israelites because of their disobedience? No again. <laughs> Sister Catherine is using caps to re-emphasize that fact. Okay. Now let's go to this uh, topic. Um, uh, let's, next slide, brother. See, uh, this is the Jewish notation for faithfulness. Haneman, this is the word used to describe uh, faithfulness in the Hebrew Bible. And the Jewish notation is that, okay? It is from right to left. Chandu brother is pointing a cursor from right to left on uh, the Jewish notation, Haneman. So we see uh, God being faithful father of man, faithful father of a nation, and faithful father of a Christian, okay? <clears throat> we'll go step by step, okay? Faithful father of man. Dear friends, let me share with you that we all glorify God when we read about God protecting Daniel in the lion's den. None of the lions harmed him. Is it not? <laughs> We glorify God and we need to glorify God. When we read the account of God protecting Daniel in the lion's den in Daniel chapter 6. Okay. Now, something greater than that happened in the book of Genesis. Moment Adam and Eve sinned, curse came upon mankind. Enmity came between the beasts, the wild beasts and mankind. Now, God was protecting Adam and Eve not only from lions, which can tear a person apart. He was protecting them from tigers. He was protecting them from cheetahs. He was protecting them from wild bears. All these wild bears can also tear human beings apart. So what is the greater story? Daniel in the lion's den or God protecting Adam and Eve? <laughs> I would say God protecting Adam and Eve. God gave strict orders. You don't go near Adam and Eve. Enmity has come. Enmity has come between them because of the curse. But God ordered 
the wild beast not to harm Adam any. Then he would clothe them, is it not? Then my question to the Guru, okay. When Eve conceived and she was giving birth to Cain, were there any maternity hospitals around? <laughs> Did Adam have any experience in helping his wife giving birth? Yes or no? No, absolutely. No experience for husband to help his wife when she is giving birth, when she is suffering from birth pangs. No maternity hospitals there. Leave alone maternity hospitals, no midwives also. At least in the biblical times when we come to the book of Exodus, we see the role of midwives. At least they are there to help a woman giving birth. No midwives also. Who protected? Who safeguarded? And why did uh, Eve give uh, the name King? Let us look into the scriptures. Um, uh, sister will read it out for us from Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 to 3. What is the meaning of the word Cain? Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. I have acquired a man from the Lord. It is with his help that I have been able to give birth. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. No maternity hospital. Husband did not help. He doesn't have any experience. No midwives. Even though they had been unfaithful to God, God continued to be faithful. God continues to keep, you know, keep his covenant. Are you with me? Let's go back to the slideshow. <clears throat> Let's go back to the slideshow. Yeah. Now, faithful father of man. Uh, let's go to the next slide, brother. Next slide. Uh, I will ask Sister Catherine to read one uh, scripture portion, and then I will ask a question to the group, and then we will conclude, and we will carry on the subject in the next week. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 1, and also Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 10 and 11. Next week, we will start from here, but uh, I'm taking it to a suspenseful climax, okay? 29 then, verse 1. Yeah. Now, these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the remainder of the elders who were carried away captive to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. They became exiles because of idol worship. Remember that. Okay, they were now in it. They were now in Babylon and Jeremiah is sending a letter to them from Jerusalem to all the exiles who were in Babylon. Did they go to Babylon to do business? Did they go to Babylon to pursue higher education? Why? What were they doing in Babylon? Why were they in Babylon in the first place? Give me an answer in the public chat now so that I know that you have understood the subject properly. Did they? <laughs> Why captivity? Next question. Why captivity? Disobedience, yes. Idolatry. Idolatry. That is why they were in Babylon at that point of time. They did not go to Babylon to pursue higher education. They did not go to Babylon to uh, pursue uh, business. Idolatry. And now look at uh, verses 10 and 11. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Thank you, sister. Uh, I'll just read it out from the scripture portion which I have put in the slide. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Did the exiles in Babylon deserve these comforting words? Give me an yes or no. 
these words of comfort, these words of reassurance, did they deserve it? No. They were in Babylon because they had rejected God. They had resorted to idol worship. They had broken the covenant with him. But look at our Heavenly Father's faithfulness. He is keeping his word. He is, you know, maintaining the covenant. So, dear friends, tomorrow, uh, next week, we will start from here. And we will go to a very important uh, story, which we have read from our childhood onwards. But we have never seen the 360 degree perspective of that story. Okay? I just leave you with a word of suspense. Okay? Listen to me very carefully. Where does Joe Biden reside? Where does Joe Biden reside? What is the name? Give me the name of the place now. That house. White House. <laughs> Can anybody enter White House and kill Joe Biden just like that over a period of one night? No. no. Daniel chapter 5, it says, the words of judgment of prophet Daniel spoken on behalf of the Lord to Belshazzar, who was blaspheming the name of the Lord, who was you know, defiling the holy items brought from Temple, Jerusalem, uh, temple in Jerusalem. Mene, mene, teke luparsin. You have been weighed and found to be unfit. Okay? You will die this very day. You will die this very night. Babylon was a world superpower. Can anybody enter Babylon just like that and kill uh, Belshazzar? All this and more next week. Okay? All this and more next week. Let us uh, uh, look at it from the perspective of Jewish Bible commentaries, some things which we, as Christians, we do not know. Only when we read the Jewish Bible commentaries, we get to see the 360 degree perspective of any subject. We will get to know about it next week. Okay, we will conclude here. I uh, I request Sister Jayamala to lead us in closing prayer. Sister Jayamala will lead us in closing prayer. Afterwards, Brother Benoni Richards will lead us in Lord's prayer when. Brother Benoni Richards is leading us in Lord's Prayer. Let us all mute. Okay? Let us say the prayer alongside Brother Benoni Richard, but let us all mute. Now, Sister Jayamala to lead us in closing prayer. Pastor, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Got the right. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, today evening, Lord. Yes, Lord, our hearts are filled with gratitude, Lord. Aya, Miru Namada Ginavadu, Viswasata Galginavadu Prava, Miru Covenant Chesetandri. You never look back, O Lord. You never take back, O Lord. Such faithful God we have, Father. We praise and thank you. And Lord, for all the truths, Lord, you are revealing toward us, O Father. We praise and thank you, Lord. For your awesomeness, O Lord, we fall flat, O Lord, before your throne of grace. And we exalt your name above all names, Prabhu. Me sayavukulu nathandri, Prabhu. Shodesh Pashtagani, Mira. Yair Pachkani, Aya. Yanta sramapadi, Prabhu. Ayana maa kisana vakya man batti vandhanal sutulu stotral chelisana nathandri. Maraksha could me pray Kumada and Ace Chrissy, the Nana Prava. Marie Manshukum, son of Manga, son of Gadga Prava, Yetla than the Prava. Akasham Nakuna than the Bumiki Majavella di Prava, Makichin of Imocher and Makjap and Cheskuna, one Nals to Stotral Chelisan and Tandri. Merichinavak Danam, but the Merichinavak human, but to one Nal Chelisan and Prava. Tandi Majivita Lamaku Chalin, a devil of Gauntanar Prava, Mikus Stotral Tandri. Aya Namadagan, a devil of Prati Nimsham could have Prava, you are proving yourself, O Lord God. Amen. We cannot confine you, Lord, in, 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 in human language, Prava. Miku Sutulu Sotra Chelisan and I each not twenty Ichakani Prava, Wednesdays Prava Bible study in Bati Vandanali, group in Bati Vandanalaya, Benoni, brother Nibati Nathani, all the parents in Vandanal Prava, Tandi Marimioka Sankal Pamlo, Anadena Prava Miri, the Miru Starches Araya. Mama London with the Slupetkuna Tandi makes Sutulu Sotra Chelisan. Aya pastor, I got Mirichin at twenty Yanam Rubati, one and all a prova. Sister Gar Saharis in a twenty Shiva Mugan, but one and all Sutul Chelis and Kutuman, Devinch and Deprava, Miatpato, Nimpandi, Inca, Balama and a Patraka, Vadkun, and Lord, we really want to thank and praise the Lord for that passion He has, Lord, toward you and Lord, toward your word, Aya. Chair Naprati Wakanikuda, Ashir in Chandaya, Benanagan Mukinga, Devinch and every person, O Lord, who is involved, O Lord, in this, in this. Bible study, Lord, we want to praise and thank you, Lord. Let your work, word, oh Lord God, sink, Lord, within in our hearts and let it permeate, Lord, into every part of our life. 
that we may reflect, Lord, your righteousness, Lord, your goodness, Lord, wherever we are living and wherever we are working. Amen. Lord, I cannot Amen. do in any way, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you'll bless them abundantly, Father, for their fervent and faithful prayers, Prabhu. Continue the healing, Lord, you have begun. And Lord, heal him fast. But Exari Mikustutlu Stotral Chelisan and Thandri, Tirivachi Wednesday Prava, me, Miss Sunday Locana Pareparentum, Pratidinanum, Ashirva Karanga Chand, Mikum Prava, Miku Ganathan Tiscoch, Mik Mahiman Tiscoch, Miman Ganapach, Titla Maji with Alamach, Miman Ved Kutan, and let the word of Lord what we heard today will work, Lord, deep within our lives and change, Lord, our attitude and Lord, our, our way of Lord, our perspective toward life, Prava. One than also to Luchelis and a kitchen avocas and but to mix to Luchelis. Mariksari Prava Yoka, group and but to one than all chelis. Yes, a crease of the women and Amamulus to Tiara than a three manable and Miss Sanilo Summer Pitch Putan Tandri. Amen. Amen.